Claudia and Jackie Oshry, thank you guys so much for being here today. We are celebrating your six year toast anniversary. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. How are you guys feeling? What's the vibe? Proud. Proud, excited, nostalgic a little bit. Yeah. Is it weird to say a little sad? But not in like a sad way. And just in you know, time is moving so fast. I only have so many so much time with my sis. Oh, don't know? no, now you're making it sad. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna die soon. <laughs> no, but also watching back some of the old footage, it's very nostalgic just to see us, our younger selves, to see how far we've come. And it's all really exciting and it makes us optimistic for the future, like what will six years from now be like? But definitely a lot's happened in six years, so you're just kind of taking stock of it. Yeah, and I do wonder if in six years we'll look back on, you know, toast episodes from this year and be like cringing with embarrassment at what we were wearing and how we were sounding. Because that's how I feel when I watch early episodes. I'm like, girl, throw the jeans away. Like you have one pair, get another pair. And I'm like, <laughs> but you can't throw them away, you only have one pair. <laughs> like get a new pair of pants and like stop talking so New York accent, Long Island and slow down. Like I just want to shake myself. Do you think that your sense of humor has evolved over the year? Or you've always kind of been the same way. We were just having this conversation. I think our sense of humors have definitely evolved. One, because we've just grown up and you have you know a more grown up sense of humor. But also I think when we first started out, we were like a little afraid of saying anything, you know, remotely, not PC and when you want to be funny and that's just the nature of comedies you got to step out of the box sometimes and I think we've as we've gotten older we've gotten much more comfortable just saying things that we think are funny you know or is it the most conservative like buttoned up joke no but it's funny and that's what we do it's yeah. a comedy podcast we're funny we try yeah did you guys ever think that you would have such a big following I feel like, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's been a very like natural progression, like every day. It's not like one day we woke up and we had this big Viral. following or we blew up or anything like every day. It's been like steady, steady growth. So it's none of it has been so surprising because it's like the work that we put in every day paying off really. Yeah. So how much of it is work and how much of it is just being yourselves? That's a good question. I would say like 20% of it is just our personalities and having fun but the other half like it is a business I think a lot of times when people come to our studio or we just walk people through our days they're really surprised at how so much of it is a little mundane you know it's editing it's uploading it's making content it's the podcast itself which is about 70 ish minutes every day is fun it's flirty it's 30 flirty and thriving but beyond that there's a lot of admin that goes into running a successful podcast especially when you're a daily show but I feel like those 70 minutes where we're live and recording it's really us just being ourselves aside from like our ad commitments the structure of the show we're there to be ourselves and then it's the rest of the day doing all of the business work behind it yeah, yeah. and I think a lot of people are also shocked to find out there's really no outline we don't sit down with an outline of points we need to hit stories we want to tell it's just a very natural flow I don't like to use the term wing it because it sounds like lazy but it's improv comedy it's improv we really That's don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't like to you know rehearse because then it sounds rehearsed and so many of the most like legendary moments from our show happened completely by accident and we love that yeah you guys were talking about on your podcast how over the years you've had to kind of grow a thicker skin um, through the ups and downs um, what has helped you do that I think time and age are the biggest things age but Front also trial by fire like you you go through like internet backlash once and it's the worst thing that's ever happened to you in your entire life your entire self-worth is completely destructed and the more times it happens, the less of an impact it has on you. So it's it's sort of just something that over time loses its fervor, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But also just growing up. Yeah. Frontal lobe development. Huge. Key. Major key. Yeah. <laughs> what is like one of the weirdest things that you were ever trolled for where you like posted something and you were like, why was that even an issue or funny or anything? Like something that shocked you. Oh, well, I always say something that we get trolled for that I didn't realize oh. was something about us is that we have fangs. Oh, we get made fun of for our teeth a lot. And we do. We have fangs. We didn't know. We're not vampires. We're huge fans of Twilight, though. <laughs> Team Edward for life. Yeah. So it's funny how, like, being on the internet, people will let you know things about your physical appearance that never bothered you. Still don't bother me. But they're looking at you, like, honestly, closer than you're looking at yourself. Yeah, they will give you new insecurities. Yeah. For me, that happened with the size of my gums. I, I really never <laughs> thought much of my gums. And actually, when I lost a lot of weight, I started to see what people were saying. It was giving gum. <laughs> it was giving orbit. And I was like, and I actually got a lip flip, so thanks. I love the way I look. Look, look at these gums. Ready? Gorgeous. Like, what is it? Like, a centimeter, as it should be. Beautiful. I don't okay. see. No gum in sight. Exactly. Claudia, are you working on any new music? 
Her so, favorite question. <laughs> yeah, my fans, my music fans are just like really, kind of like how everyone's coming at Rihanna for her next album. I get the same sort of feedback from mm -hmm. my fans. Um, I'll say this. I'll say this. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I might be soon. Never but say never. I don't want to be like Taylor Swift Easter egg, but I might soon. Will it be a country music album? You know, I have really thought, actually, on a very serious level, like, what my next song would be, because I feel like I've kind of taken the pop world by storm. Um, <laughs> conquered it. Conquered, beyond. Done. Yeah. Um, and I think that I'm going to let that space be for a little bit, and I have actually, in a very serious, you know, way, thought about my next song being more of a ballad, you know, really showing off my vocals. And I love I, I love singing. Singing is my favorite. If I could do this for a living, but it was for singing, it would be my dream. No offense to you. Like, no, no, I know it kills you. Like, we go on stage and, like, they want you to talk and yeah. not sing. When I go on tour, I always sing, like, the second before the curtain goes up. I'm like, if they, these people were here to hear me sing, not do comedy, like, my life would be, I would have no problems in my life. <laughs> I love, love, love singing. And I do it as a joke, but, and I'm being dead serious, I have the most incredible singing. Give them like, something. You do. Okay. Any requests? Celine Dion? Oh, Taylor. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, Taylor. Okay, mm. hold on. Peace. There were nights when the wind was so cold. And my body froze in bed if I just listened to it right outside the window. Oh. There were days when... Sorry, <laughs> it's just an emotional song, you know? <laughs> it's emotional Living time. Living out her dream. <laughs> Living my dream, exactly. So, um... I think a ballad, much like the one I just sang, would really highlight my, my vocal abilities. And maybe people would start taking me a little bit more seriously. Because they think of me now as kind of like a... Do you give me maybe like as a Carly Rae Jepsen? Would you suggest like Airhead pop star? Exactly, but, but they don't know. So I've much got brains more deep down. Deep down, she's yeah. deep. So I'm working on my, on my my next sort of era for my music career. All right. Well, I'm excited to see what you come up with. You and three other people. <laughs> <laughs> me, is one of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Jackie, I want to talk about you. Recently welcomed your second child. Yes. How long ago? Six months? Almost eight months. Eight months ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, how's that going? It's great. It's just, it's been so fun. Um, it's a lot of work and I'm not going to underestimate it, but overall, like the joy outweighs the torture. The, the, yeah, the, it's long days working hard, but it, it honestly, it's great. Thank you. Is there something that you're weirdly strict with that with your kids that you didn't think that you would be? I'm kind of a strict mama. Kind of. Yeah. yeah no, and I, but I I get in trouble. Like no. I expected that I would be. Nothing uh, I don't think anything unreasonable, but I think as a parent always, especially nowadays, like you have to be on top of your kids. And I mean, they're so young, like where else would I be right. if not like but yeah, I I I'm a helicopter mom. Proud. Is there something that you're weirdly lax about that other parents are really strict about? Hmm. Unlimited time with your auntie. Oh, yeah. Never too much of your auntie. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. I'm sure you like to sing to her kids, right? Yeah, well, they love it. And so they know <laughs> that their aunt is a pop star. And I think that's probably one of their favorite things about me. But it's probably also my kind heart, you know? So I want to talk about you, Claudia, for a little bit. Um, you're training for your Maybe? 5K. <laughs> yes, we I never am. do. How's that going? That's coming up. Yeah, I appreciate you calling it a 5K because when people are like, wait, how many miles is that? They're like, oh, it's only 3.1. It's a lot, especially if you've never really worked out in your life. So I just want to say one man's 5K is another man's marathon. So the 5K training is going OK. I'm, I'm pretty steady at a 13 minute mile, which is really not that good, but I feel good. And I feel strong. I really do. And I'm excited. I'm putting together my playlist. I just brought on a sponsor. Yeah, that's right. Turning on a sponsor for the 5K. So I'm feeling really good, you know, because now I'm you know, getting to shape and I'm making money. Who, who really could ask for more? You really open about your health journey, yes. which I think all of your fans really appreciate. You were on Ozempic, now you're off of it. You're doing Weight Watchers, mm -hmm. a lot of high protein. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling post Ozempic, current Weight Watchers? I feel good. I think when I was on Ozempic, my biggest fear was being off of it. And people would always ask, well, what are you gonna do? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. And now I've been off of it for like five months and I, have figured it out. I'm really, um, I feel like I live a really balanced life. I eat well, I work out, I feel really good, I feel really strong. So I feel very relieved actually because this idea of the day I get off Ozempic was always like a scary thing for me. It was something I always thought about, but I was just trying to focus on my journey at the time. And now that I've made it, I feel really good. I feel like it's doable. And if it's doable for me, I'm telling you, it's doable for anyone else. Like I was the least likely to end up this way. Like I had a really, I think, a very bad case 
of whatever it was, of laziness, of obesity, of poor choices, of really lack of willpower. So I feel really, um, I feel proud of myself and I feel really good, I feel relieved. Well, I think something that both of you guys really preach all the time is there's a difference between looking good and feeling good and it's much more important to feel good. So maybe now that you're in that place, you're able to, you know, be able to understand what you need to be doing to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, and I feel like it's so important that you, you know, feel good. There's so many different ways of feeling good physically and mentally, and I feel really proud that when I was at an unhealthier weight, I always had a really good mental health. Like, I always felt really good about it myself. I was always really confident. I didn't let any sort of insecurity, you know, I think a lot of people's weight can affect them, you know, in their relationships, at their job. They're, you know, afraid to take risks. And I feel really proud of myself that, you know, no matter what I weigh, I'm always the same annoying ass bitch. Like, you're not going to catch me feeling any differently just because I look differently. But from a physical perspective, you know, having so much more energy throughout the day, I will say it's it's one of the best feelings. And I didn't even know, like, how different my life could be. This is a question for both of you. What do you think about celebrities when they post their weight loss and everyone is speculating if they're on Ozempic, should they share that they're on it or do they have a right to keep that private? I don't know how much time you have because I have a TED talk prepared. Um, <laughs> I feel like so much of the conversation about Ozempic, no shade to page six, but you guys are definitely responsible. Um, you're part of the problem. It revolves around celebrities mm -hmm. and it's just so unimportant. Like. And that's why I loved Oprah's special. Like, she really shared how the, the drug is helping regular people. And yeah, okay, so what, a couple people in Hollywood are maybe taking it when they shouldn't or taking it whatever. Who cares? Like, why are we focusing on that? Let's focus on the actual millions of people, like myself, whose lives have completely changed for the better. And I, that's why I loved her special so much. And when it comes to celebrities, like, if a doctor has prescribed a celebrity who's a human being, prescribe them a drug, it's literally none of our business. The speculation, the witch hunt bothers me so, so, so much because what goes on between someone and their doctor is literally none of your business. And if you think they look skinny, good for you. Move on. Like, focus on yourself. So do you guys have the same feelings about cosmetic surgery, whether people should come forward about that or not? Because what about setting these unrealistic standards and being, you know, transparent? So my thinking usually is you don't have to share, but I just don't lie. Like, don't mention it. Don't be like, my lips grew overnight. They, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, but if everyone, like, if you don't want to share it, you're not obligated to share it. And I think if your lips grow in size, like we can all see surmise that you had something done but i don't think everyone's obligated to share all of the time i also really feel strongly that like in the age of social media like it's really not okay so kylie jenner got her lips done and she didn't share it and someone could say you know that contributed to, to an unhealthy beauty standard um i think that's a lot to put on one person like kylie is a human being she suffers with her own insecurities she's allowed to fix something that bothers her and i think as people but especially as women who are you know fully formed it's really on us to protect ourselves to protect what triggers us to not be influenced to be you know use critical thinking when seeing a picture of someone online and knowing that that's not what they really look like there's so much information out there and to put it on other people to shape how we view ourselves like we all need to have i think a little bit more personal um, responsibility personal, yeah responsibility and liability and how we view ourselves and, and through what lens so i'm always like if something i if i follow someone on social media and i find like it makes me hate myself like I'm unfollowing that person and that's on me I just think it's unrealistic given how much media there is out there to like put it on the Kardashians for making me feel bad about myself you know and if it does make you feel bad about yourself you should unfollow them like they don't owe it to you to make you, you feel, feel good. good about like they're people too right doing their best too speaking of celebrities it w I would be remiss if we didn't talk with the number one Swifties in the world right here about Taylor and Travis um, yesterday, Travis said on New Heights that he has no idea how he wooed Taylor. Um, I have an idea. Do you agree with that? Do you think that he's out of her league? Do you think they're even in the same arena? I think they're in separate leagues, which is what makes it so great, because I'm sure some fans of his would be like, he's so much right. greater than her. And then fans of hers are like, you know. She's the greatest thing there's, since there's no matching her. So I think because of that, and I think because they work in separate industries is why they are really well matched and they're both at the height of their industry so they can relate on that level of like being the greatest. Yeah, but I also think like she's so out of his league, especially like <laughs> in an intellectual sense. And I think that's why so many people love it. It's like he's so silly and goofy and he dances and she's like this poet, this, you know, mind of a generation. And it's kind of an unlikely pairing. Yeah. But it's so like it just makes sense. We're obsessed. Well, is he that different from her exes? Yes. yes. 
because they're all kind of famous, successful people. No. But they're all artists and they're mo they're in their feelings. They overthink. Dark they over intellectualize everything. And he's just having fun. He's just like an American meathead. You so know? maybe the silliness was what she was missing. Yes. For sure. That lightness. If you even listen to some of her music, especially from like the folklore and evermore, one of my favorite songs, Peace, it's so upsetting. And, and it's so serious. And, and her like, life shouldn't be that life way. Life doesn't need to be serious all the time. And I feel like she's at a point in her life where she should just be able to have fun and enjoy the fruits Success. of her labor and be able to like just go out to a restaurant with her boyfriend and not like worry, what does he think about this? Like he's not thinking about it. He likes the meal. He's not thinking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yummy. Yeah. This food is good. Let's go, Ty. <laughs> if you had to choose to date either Travis or Jason Kelsey, who would you pick? That's Travis. a great question. J Travis. Why? Well, just from a physical... And I'm married, <laughs> so I would never even know. You know, Travis has called me many times. I <laughs> think Travis is more my type physically. Um, he's more famous. And if you're going to date a celebrity, you know, you got to go all the way. You. That's fair. I think I'm a Jason girly. We listen to their podcast sometimes, and I just... I, I like his sense, of, his sense of humor, like, conversationally. Like, I think... I'd be more of a Jason girl. No, so, you're definitely more of a Jason, and I'm such a drama. No, for sure. Yeah. If they were to ever break up, would you guys still be football fans? Yes. Yes. No, we're in it for life. They've got a nice thing going on. They yeah, we respect the in. game, and we have kind of um, sort of fallen in love with the sport. You yeah, know? we watched games that weren't Chiefs games. And we had, how much fun did we have? A ball.